It's the second Tuesday of January, and this is the first show of Aperture and Shutter Speed in 2016. It's the photography radio show where you can learn and share your love for photography. I am your host, Chelsea Williams. I'm a professional portrait photographer in Conroe. Also with me is Dick Schisler. He runs the station and is the film and video enthusiast. Woo. If you have any questions or comments during the show, please call 936-647-3776. You can also comment on the Aperture and Shutter Speed Facebook page. So today, uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the best pictures of 2015, maybe a couple of things coming up in 2016, and there's actually a lot of stuff going on, events and stuff, so that's exciting. And later on the show, my friend Carolyn Gray is going to stop in and tell us about her new book, 365 Days of Gratitude, which I think is perfect to start out the new year thinking about uh, a year of gratitude and optimism. Um, So first off, here's what's going on in January uh, locally in photography. Today is the second Tuesday, which means Ed Gorman will be at the Conroe Art League right around the corner from us here in downtown Conroe. To help anybody who has problems with their camera, whether you've got a cheap little camera or a fancy DSLR, um, Ed is there to offer his services for free to anybody who needs help. And Ed was on the show um, a while back, and you can actually listen to him in the archives on IRLoneStar.com backslash ASS if you want to hear all about what Ed does. And the Woodlands Camera Club has a a January packed full of things. On the 18th, they're having uh, processing your photos from 7 to 9. Uh, January 21st, they're doing a learning to shoot from 7 to 9. And on January 23rd, they're doing a special workshop on Lightroom. It's an all-day thing, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's $15, which includes lunch, so pretty much it's free because you're paying for your lunch. Um... I'm kind of interested in doing that one because I, so far I've always done Photoshop and I really want to learn Lightroom. Do you know Lightroom, Dick? Yeah, uh, it's confusing to me. Yeah. so I don't really get why people use it. <laughs> well, I know a lot of people love it, so I kind of want to sign up for that workshop um, and just learn some Lightroom. Maybe I'll go and, and talk about it on the next show. Well, I, it, every time I ever speak to anybody that uses Lightroom, it's almost like they're a different photographer than what I am. But we're all, we're just talking about managing images and then editing them. And I still understand, like, well, like for example, one guy who uses it uh, primarily, that's all he uses. He goes, yeah, it allows me to do some quick edits, but then if I really wanted to edit it, I just go into Photoshop with it. And I said, well, why wouldn't you just do those quick edits in Photoshop? Because there's not – I mean, there's quick edits in right. Photoshop. So I was just kind of – I still don't really get it. Uh, it's, you know what's really funny is I tried to use it uh, last week, mm-hmm. and it's a pain to edit in Photoshop. Like if you double click it, it doesn't. Like I'm used to like Bridge where you yeah. can, you can assign where certain images. So it's like to open it, you literally have to do like four clicks <laughs> to open it in, in Photoshop, unless I'm missing a shortcut. Uh, I thought that was really interesting because I was like, this is, isn't Lightroom supposed to be the pre Photoshop? And I also understood Lightroom being the photo manager, yeah, because you can back up your files, you can store it. And I, it's gonna, it's taken me a long time to really figure out how to use it efficiently, because I still haven't figured it out. And it's actually, I don't know what happened like six years ago with Adobe, and especially in their Bridge program, they had this beautiful file system where it would consolidate files you already had. So if you did your files by date, and I try to do older pictures it would say hey you already have photos of this date do you want to replace them or you just want to consolidate them and then you can consolidate so from different cameras you still have one folder for january 5th 2010 but it would combine all the photos i took with different cameras if that makes sense and now it doesn't it creates it each for each uh type of camera so i'm getting duplicates of dates oh, yeah. and then it's just kind of like man i wish it would just consolidate into one big folder for me well maybe that, you need to take some classes so yeah i mean you know, <laughs> i have a lot more questions than I, I when i started using it so i was like forget this i'll just do it all by manual and just use my file editor through windows 10 and just do it old school copy paste <laughs> so if yeah so, yeah i'm not kidding you I, I was really upset by that i was like this is so stupid why do people use this <laughs> i know i'm kind of interested in going just learning so let me know how it goes because I, I I don't understand why they have that program. 
besides for uh, well, backing up your of, files. I know a lot of people use it, and there's a lot of plugins that work with it, so it'll be interesting. Um, actually, they have one more thing the next day. On the January 24th, they're doing learning your photo equipment. So, like, if you're, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're just starting out and you need help learning your cameras, your flashes, your strobes, anything like that, um, go out to learn your photo equipment. You can find more information about all this stuff and sign up at thewoodlandscameraclub.org. Also, we had Pete Paulson on the show um, a few months ago uh, from the Woodlands Camera Club. If you want to look that up in the archives, you can hear all about the Woodlands Camera Club and why you should join. Um, also, Kathy Adams Clark, who has also been on the show, um, who I love Kathy. She has a basics of photography workshop coming up January 23rd. So, again, if you're just starting out and you want to know the basics, it's 930 to 330 on January 23rd. And it's through the Leisure Learning Center. So go to LLU.com to register. And that is in the Woodlands. She does things all over Houston, but this one's in the Woodlands. So it's a great time to take advantage to see her. Uh, The exciting thing that I'm, like, super excited about right now is the TPPA uh, just opened up registration for Texas School of Professional Photography. Registration opened up on January 3rd. All the photo geeks were sitting at their computer at 11 to sign up for classes, including me. <laughs> um, this school runs April 24th to 29th in Addison, Texas. The reason people sit around to register is um, if you register first, you get your first choice in classes. And because you put in, like, this instructor would be my first choice, or this would be my second choice, or this would be my third. So if you register quickly, you usually get your first choice. I think every, they said like 650 people registered that night, and almost everybody got their first choice this year. And that shows that there's really a good diversity in classes, I think. Um, so I signed up for uh, mastering fine tuning your images or let me yeah mastering image tuning uh by janice went and um so i'm excited i haven't been able to go for the past few years i haven't had the opportunity and this year i can go and so i'm i'm stoked um so part of the fun thing in texas school also is that they have cool parties everyone likes cool parties yeah so, during the day, it's, you know, a whole week of all-day learning, and then at night, we have awesome parties. And everybody, I follow, um, I'm in the Texas School Photography uh, Facebook page, so I'm watching everybody and everybody that's posting about what classes they're taking, and everybody was waiting breathlessly to see what the big theme was going to be this year. And a couple of days ago, they announced the theme is Space Odyssey. So, um, all the photo geeks are going out and buying their Space Odyssey costumes. So, at the big party at Texas school, everybody's going to be crazy. I've never dressed up for Texas school before, but there's a first time for everything. You don't know. (laughs) How about you, Dick? Are you interested in going to Texas school? No. What? (laughs) No. You're over here saying you got all these questions about... About different things. You could go and... I'll just go on the internet. <laughs> There's some great resources on the internet. They, they've got um, they've got video classes. And, and in fact, Texas School is famous for their end of the week uh, video that they do. I uh, will go on the internet for that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I have to ask the question that I always ask. And... Um, I'm asking anybody that's listening, what kind of pictures have you been taking lately? Uh, answer on our Facebook page. You can tell us. You can post your pictures of what you've been doing lately. Me, personally, um, this past weekend, I went to New Iberia, Louisiana, and I went to the Rip Van Winkle Gardens there with my kids and a friend. It is amazing beautiful. So, um, I took a few pictures there. I... I I should have taken a lot more, but, you know, I had the kids and stuff. But it was just gorgeous. And, I mean, you can't, you know, you can walk every two feet and have another place to take an amazing picture. The sad thing is I lived in New Iberia for two years, and I'd never been out there before. (laughs) That's typical. A lot of uh, folks who live somewhere, they, they always find these little treasures when it's too late. 
Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Uh, especially when photography comes around. I think uh, especially, Montgomery County has a lot of beautiful places to go shoot. And today, actually, I think you got all the way to about Thursday when it starts raining to get some really good cloud coverage. Like today, there aren't, aren't a lot of clouds, so you get some bright pictures. But uh, I always encourage people just to step out and just start walking somewhere. Yeah. And see what see where it takes you. So. And, you know, like this place was something that I had seen online before. And I was like, oh, the pictures aren't that great. I don't want to go. But you go in person, it's completely different. So if you look up stuff in Montgomery County and you're like, I don't know, just go. Check it out. And Or like Dick said, just wander around and find something unique. So. Yeah, I think a lot of, uh, especially photographers who are, not, who are amateur photographers, uh, what they don't try to adapt to is just having the, the, having the camera on themselves at all times. Uh, I know I kind of adapted to it by buying a uh, fixed lens at 40 millimeter pancake, which allowed the length of my camera to be so thin I could just carry it under my jacket. And I still get some fantastic shots with my 6D. And then uh, I, but I am also limited just to 40 millimeters. But, uh, but still, I can carry it wherever I want, and it's not a big burden to a lot right. of people. And uh, one thing I like about my camera is the response time uh, through the lighting, and I can take really good pictures at night, and no one really notices the difference. I get a lot of comments on my photos. It was like, when were you taking pictures? And I thought that was pretty funny. One of my favorites was uh, my brother recently got married, and I was in the wedding. And I really wanted to get a shot of the bride because I'm on the groom's side. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I carried my camera on me while I was sitting behind the best man. And I leaned over real quick, grabbed my uh, camera because I have it on a sling, and just just took two quick pictures of her and then went back to being uh, a groomsman. And uh, when I showed the picture to her, she's like, when did you take this photo? Because I was like in her face with it. But <sighs> but since my camera's so low profile, you, yeah. you, she didn't really notice me taking a picture of her. Uh, so I, that's why I encourage people to always have their camera on them wherever they go. In that instance, I think that's great that you did that picture. However, as oh my, he was my brother was furious at me for taking <laughs> photos. He well because when you have the reputation of the family of being the photographer, he's like, I want to make a point that I don't want you taking pictures. And it's like, <laughs> and I said, are, Why do you say that? He goes, Because I know you always kind of are asked to do those things and you don't get to enjoy yourself and i was like well my new mentality on it is just let me take pictures i want to take pictures of don't tell me what to do and that and that's why i love this 40 millimeter uh lens because it really just it restricts the way you take your photos but it also allows you the freedom of having the smaller camera on you and it's just so much fun to shoot with because like you're on that fixed lens i know they recently released a 50 millimeter new one with the new usm motors in it and it's just kind of like it's so much more fun to shoot with. I don't know what it is. This lens is only one hundred and twenty-five dollars, and it's just it changes everything. Like what I, what I think about mm-hmm. photography, and especially with the photos I love to take. So yeah, well, I think that's great that you have a camera that's discreet. Um, it is kind of annoying when people have their cell phones out at wedding, leaning over the aisles, things like that. That gets in the way. But you know, um, sounds like you figured out a way to to take a lot of cool pictures without getting anybody's face. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, well. I mean, my my newest uh, obstacle is I was given a a light bulb or Gary Fong reflector, mm-hmm. and those things are huge. Yeah. So when you have your light on top of your camera and you're trying to take photos, it's just kind of obvious what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. You're either talking to a satellite or you're uh, taking <laughs> taking pictures. So that's one thing I, I've been trying to learn how to use it, and also. Um, how not to get people upset. The one thing I do like about it, though, it diffuses the light enough to where it doesn't blind everybody constantly. Because if you're using a direct flash, a lot of people, that's when they start complaining. Yeah. Where it's like, you're blinding me. But now this, the Gary Fong uh, attachment really allows me to take really good photos in a big room and then uh, not really bother a lot of people. Awesome. So that's what I was doing. I was just bothering people. Yeah. You have a tendency. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, do um, you want to take a quick break? And when we get back, I think we're going to talk about um, things, the best pictures of 2015 and some things to look for in 2016. Uh, you're listening to Aperture and Shutter Speed. Have a legal question? Are you a resident of Montgomery County? 
Call 281-645-6344 to talk to a volunteer attorney from the Woodlands Bar Association. We answer the phones on the first Monday of every month at 281-645-6344 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. to provide general legal information and information about legal resources to Montgomery County residents. Lone Star Internet Radio is now bringing you the weekly business hour show each Monday morning at 11 a.m. My name is Rick Schistler and I will be your host. Each week we will be bringing you local, area, and national business news that you can use. The program will also feature an interview with a local or national business person who will share their own experiences, successes, and failures in operating their businesses. Our show is for anyone who already owns a business, whether they work solo or have employees and for those who are thinking about starting their own businesses. A bit of information about myself. Again, my name is Rick Schisler, and I am a Silver Fox advisor who has over 40 years experience as a serial entrepreneur. As a part of our show, I will offer some advice and encouragement on our monthly topic, and I will take your questions by email at rschisler at silverfox.org or call into the station at 936 647 3776. See you on the radio Monday at 11 a.m. for the weekly business hour. Our community's animal shelters cannot absorb accidental litters of kittens and puppies. Approximately 80% of the animals entering our shelters will not make it out alive. Please help be a part of the solution. Please spay and neuter your pets. Many low-cost options are available. Visit TexasLitterControl.org to learn more. That's TexasLitterControl.org. And remember, real Texans don't litter. Please spay and neuter your pets. Doing business since 1985, Assistance League of Montgomery County is a nonprofit, all volunteer organization where all proceeds stay in Montgomery County. Through our Operation School Bell program, we have provided new clothes to over 50,000 students in our county. Visit our thrift shop at 126 North San Jacinto Street in downtown Conroe or call us at 936 936- 760 1151. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. It's a wonder I can think at all. Welcome back to Aperture and Shutter Speed. I'm Chelsea here with Dick. And we've been talking photography. Um, before the break, uh, we talked about a lot of different things going on in the photography world and how you can get involved. If you missed any of that, it'll be up on IRLoneStar.com backslash ASS. Um, so now... It, we're starting on a whole new year. It's 2016. And in December, a lot of um, a lot of different companies had a contest for best picture of the year. And I think if you just throw that out there, what was the best picture of 2015? You'd come up with a million different answers because it's so objective. Everybody has a different idea of what the best picture would be. Um I was just looking at a few things recently, and I know that um, National Geographic did a photo contest for Best Picture of 2015, and they chose a winner that was um, a tornado, and it was amazing. It was crazy incredible. But then I also looked through like all the finalists and the runners-up, and each one of those were amazing, and they were all different. I mean, they had lions and... You know, all different types of things. And it was really incredible. If you're at your computer right now, just Google it. Like, National Geographic 2015 contest. Um, yeah, so the winner was James Smart, who did the tornado. And um, I just thought that that was so cool. But how would you ever choose? And then National Geographic has another page. Because they have, like, five different Facebook pages. They have, like, National Geographic Magazine, which I think was that one and then right now they have national geographic adventure page and they're doing a contest now for adventure of the year and so there's all these photos and videos of like the most adventurous people in the world i guess and um so they want you to vote for the different people 
and um like there's these guys who rock climbed in yosemite who's supposed to be like um the flattest mountain or something i don't know much about rock climbing but it was crazy looking at these pictures and videos um it like i don't know they were all amazing pictures and videos um i don't know how you would ever choose the best one but what i do think is really interesting when i was looking through all this national geographic stuff is that national geographic years ago would hire photographers to go out and take pictures to put with articles and different things and now they've just gotten people to give them their photos by doing hashtag your photo hashtag contest hashtag whatever and people are just submitting these amazing photos for them to use (laughs) So, um, I don't know how I feel about that exactly. Like, it's amazing. You get to see a wide variety of incredible photos, but it's also a little soul crushing that that's like the death of professional photography. Um, what do you think about that? Any comments? Yeah, I think, uh, with the ease between the phone and the camera, I, I I like the idea of the technology where people like, for example, they make Wi-Fi cards for your for your camera now that send the photo directly to your phone and that way you can still have that professional quality of the photo but post it on those platforms like instagram and twitter and still have that professionalism to it Uh instead of using the camera on your phone i know instagram's biggest gripe from my perspective is they don't have a web-based uh interface for instagram you can't post photos through your web or through your uh browser you have to use your phone and to me to transfer a photo from you know like a 20 meg photo to my camera it can take some time and it's just the ease of access isn't there but the sad thing is the audience is there mm-hmm. and so and you're not getting your content to your audience so uh i i, I like the idea of this car is wi-fi cards and especially uh with the apps that are coming out that you can use for canon and icon with the wi-fi capabilities on your phone and on your uh, camera itself yeah. the actual but i know newer or older versions of the wi-fi it's not necessarily you get to send your photos but it's more of you just take a picture it's like a remote camera almost right. your remote um but that that's the that's how i feel about it i mean you're really trying to get the quality of photos because one thing pe- a lot of people don't realize especially in the film world i know we touched about it is having the right equipment to view the the product or the the shot in its full spectrum Mm -hmm. a lot of people and it's kind of the only way i can really explain it to you fast enough is like that whole eight hateful eight situation that movie quentin tarantino shot in 70 millimeter which is 8k resolution and a lot of people are like whoa 8k resolution exists i'm like folks that's been existing since lawrence of arabia so that kind of quality 8k not 4k 8k is possible but you just have to have the have to have the equipment to to produce it and also to view it uh one thing i remember the big transition between 720p and 1080p on youtube was huge like that the infrastructure they had to implement to where people can actually watch their videos in 1080p and that was before 1080p monitors were really becoming a deal and uh, now it's the 60 frame rates uh 60 frames a second and then they're going on to higher refresh rates and it's just uh if you don't have the equipment to view it there's really you don't get to get the awe right. and feel of it um Another a good example was 2015 had a, a movie called the uh, the Walk, which is about uh, the man who walks the tightrope between the t- uh, two towers, and Robert Zemeckis did it. And that director is really well known for like Castaway and, and uh, Back to the Future and all those kind of movies. And one thing he mentioned was if you don't get to, if you don't see this in IMAX, then you just you don't get the full experience. And people were throwing up because of the nauseating feeling he created through his cinematography mm-hmm. about walking on a wire that high up on the uh, between the two towers back in the, I think it was the uh, late 80s when the man did this but uh, but that's like I said you also have to have the screen to view it and on your phone I mean it's not bad but I also think that's why those filters are so popular because at first glance it makes those photos so easy to soak in yeah but then you realize how bad the quality yeah. of those photos are after if you're a photographer oh you're like gosh. and uh which is i mean it's okay i don't i don't i mean that's what the world is going towards so, so th- many of the instagram photos are just terrible though. well yeah terrible th- but also you're looking at who what audience are they pandering to because if you're looking like the the list you you just talked about national geographic it's amazing one of my favorite uh entries of it was the glow worms in new zealand mm-hmm. 
And the the fact that that man spent that many hours in a cave just to shoot it, I, I think it was like 60 hours. And his frames were, I think he did 30 second open shutter all the way to 30 minutes open shutter. Mm -hmm. And to get these glow worms in a cave. And like that to me is kind of the journey. And I'm interested in that, how that photo, or especially how that video came about. Uh, you should really check it out. It's on National Geographic. Um, he won the New Zealand Ge uh, Geographic Photographer of the Year Award with the time lapse of it. And You know, that that is one thing I like about National Geographic is because it kind of like represents not just the picture, but like the journey and the adventure of going out and doing it. And it's not just like, click, did it, you know. It's it's a it's an adventure to get out there and see these things. Well, especially with the credentials, you you learn from the experience, and that's how you can tell a really good photographer to a photographer who's in training, really. Especially with lighting, portraits are huge, and you know and you got these portrait guys who can charge two grand a photo because they have the they have the training and they mm -hmm. have the experience, and they they provide what you're looking for. But you're I mean you're paying top dollar, but yeah. at least you're getting something that you're, you're paying for yeah. in a sense. But, but that uh, also goes the other way. If you want a $20 photo, you get what you pay you for. You get your $20 <laughs> photo. I think, I, I forgot what it was. Uh, I want to say it was Ashton Kutcher, but he had this story that uh, he, when he got his first headshot and it was some guy he met at a supermarket in like Los Angeles or something. And someone says, Hey, you look like a model. Do you have any headshots? And he's like, no, I don't. And the guy took his headshot, and it turned out the guy who took his photo was uh, turned out to be one of the most famous headshot people in 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 Hollywood. But uh, the story itself is kind of funny because Ashton Kutcher goes along telling you, like, you know, you meet this random guy in a grocery store, and then he invites you into this posh L.A. home, but no furniture, nothing's in it, and you're wondering if you're going to get murdered. <laughs> and uh, but the headshot, I and mean, then like it, that's what he said. It, it kind of got him. When the first headshot was really well taken, he thought, but then when someone recognized who took the photo and all that kind of stuff, that's when his career really, he goes, man, I started making it right then when I didn't even know. I didn't even pay the guy. I didn't have to pay him. So, you know, that's even cre creepier. But, hey, you know, that's probably the photographer trying something out new, mm -hmm. and you got to have a subject sometimes. So. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, talking about um, cell phones, when I was looking at different, like, photo contests for the photos of the year, <sighs> crap, I can't even remember... I think it was the Huffington Post did one that was just cell phone pictures and it was the best picture 2015 with cell phones and there were some really good finalists and they ended up choosing somebody it was like a heavyweight heavy couple laying on the beach asleep and it was okay but you look through some of the other finalists and you're like it's incredible they did that with cell phones and it was it was kind of interesting to look at um well, I think also you look at the you look at the photographer's point of view. It's like almost like they're scared of something being taken over uh, or their importance. But I think that photographer has been in that challenge ever since the digital age came around. Because yeah. uh, you know the steps it took to do film actually required time wise steps, and a lot of people don't want to put that time into it to produce a photo to you know publish it and mm -hmm. preserve it and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people didn't care, and so that's why you had those special photography geeks. Because that really did tr create a craft. In today's yeah. world, anyone can buy a DSLR and shoot a photo yeah. that somewhat has quality. And then the phones are even scarier. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I think what's going to come next in photography is just the where you are taking the photo and how good of a artist you are in creative photo. Because you can go out here in Montgomery County and take some beautiful landscape photos. Yeah. But a lot of people don't realize that's Montgomery County. And especially if you're really good at Photoshop, you can do a lot of things. Uh, but I think with people being scared of Instagram or phones, I mean, it's just stupid because it's just part of photography. Well, I think part of the the predictions for 2016, as I was reading some different articles, is that because cell phones are getting better and better in photo quality, which I enjoy that too because I take, you know, snapshots, um, like the lower end cameras, like $500 or less, are starting to go away because they're not selling anymore. Like, Nikon, Canon, they're having trouble selling their cheaper cameras because people can just get a cell phone. So now they're predicting that they're going to kind of, you know, phase those things out and they're going to focus on the higher end cameras and try to sell directly, you know, mostly to professionals who want to really have it as a craft or a profession. 
and then everybody else is just going to have their cell phones. Well, I mean, you look at Canon when they went from 720 to full HD 1080p. They used to have the XL2 market, and the XL2 was the staple of low end, high production. <laughs> and now they can like completely got rid of their video cameras. Almost, if you go to uh, Canon USA, you look at how they're trying to sell their video mm-hmm. cameras. There's only a few options, and they're really the jump between consumer end and professional end is huge. Yeah. You're going to spend two thousand dollars for consumer end, and then they're going to jump you all the way up to fifteen grand with the, just the body. You're not even the lens. The lens itself right. is fifteen grand. So, uh, and like I said, I mean that trend's going to happen. And but also one thing that's never really changed in the photography world, the lenses. Uh, I think that's one thing I like about the uh, older school, like mine, full-frame lenses, is I can still use the full-frame lenses from 30 years ago from Canon. And so the market for buying under the table, like from other people, not just through Canon, Mm -hmm. is a lot more appealing than today when you buy a lower-end digital SLR. You have to buy the EFS lenses that are kind of made for it, and they're cheaper, and they probably won't last as long. You can still use the EF lenses, but you're you're not using it to its full potential. So maybe I I kind of hope the digital part that digital limitation goes away, and the higher end right. cameras. I think what what uh, camera companies are going to work on more with lenses is uh, like the VR on them, like the vibration reduction on trying to improve that on their lenses. And um, I don't know that they've really mastered that yet, but I think they're still working on it. I don't know. Uh, Anyway, you want to take a little break, and when we get back, we're going to talk to my friend Carolyn Gray about her book, 365 Days of Gratitude. You're listening to Aperture and Shutter Speed. I'm Lieutenant Bob Berry with the Conroe Police Department, reminding you that texting and talking on the phone while driving are not only dangerous, but also illegal in school zones and other posted areas. Drive safely. And alert. Doing business since 1985, Assistance League of Montgomery County is a nonprofit, all volunteer organization where all proceeds stay in Montgomery County. Through our Operation School Bell program, we have provided new clothes to over 50,000 students in our county. Visit our thrift shop at 126 North San Jacinto Street in downtown Conroe or call us at 936 936- Seven six zero one one five one. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. At Jazzy Junk, volunteers reclaim, restore, and recycle. Jazzy Junk is a nonprofit resale storefront where you will discover wonderful, unique finds at very affordable prices on furniture, antiques books, art, home decor, and more. When you shop Jazzy Junk, you support New Danville, a community for adults with developmental disabilities. We receive new donations daily, so plan a visit to Jazzy Junk today to find that perfect item or gift. Our motto is here today, gone today. So remember to hurry in and shop often for the best selection. Jazzy Junk is located in the outlets at Conroe on Leak Line Road and I-45 North. Call 936-441-4500 or visit our website jazzyjunk.org that's J-U-N-Q-U-E for more information and store hours. The Conroe YMCA's benchmark adaptive programming for kids and adults is Leap of Faith. Leap of Faith is an equine assisted therapy program serving children and adults with adaptive needs. The riders in our Leap of Faith program are working to address and manage specific aspects of their lives impacted by illness, injury, or disability. The Leap of Faith program has experience working with riders who are living with attention deficit or other hyperactivity disorders, hearing impairments, visual impairments, developmental delays or disabilities, autism, Down syndrome, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, head traumas, brain injuries, and paralysis. Our program uses horseback riding to develop self-confidence and self-esteem, to increase upper and lower body strength, assist in respiratory issues, and establish a trusting relationship between the rider and their horse. Not only do these activities aid in the physical and mental development of the rider, but they also foster self-reliance and independence. For more information regarding our program, to become a writer, or to volunteer with a great group of people, please call our Welcome Center at 936-441-9622 
or visit our website at www.ymcahouston.org slash Conrad. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. Welcome back to Aperture and Shutter Speed. I am Chelsea Williams. Uh, before the break, we were talking about, you know, the best pictures of 2015, what's going on in 2016, and now I have my friend Carolyn Gray here in the studio. She has just published a book called 365 Days of Gratitude, which I thought was very fitting for the beginning of the year. So welcome, Carolyn. Thank you, Chelsea. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for taking time out to be with us. Uh, before we get started with the questions I have. I just want everybody to kind of understand why I invited Carolyn here. Um, she's not a photographer. She's a writer. But me personally, I um, am working on a project where I'm doing a journal style photo book and I've never published anything before, but I'm working on it. And since Carolyn's book is journal style, I thought I would have her on and kind of give me some tips, anything that she had. And anybody out there that's a photographer, you might be interested in publishing your work and maybe you could learn something. So listen up. Uh, okay, Carolyn, tell everybody who you are, what your background is, just a little bit about yourself first. Okay. Uh, I am a professional coach. I'm a, con- a business etiquette consultant and I teach manners and etiquette to tots, teens, and tweens, and tots are my favorite. (laughs) They're so cute, four- and five-year-olds. I'm also um, an HR consultant and a writer. And a writer. And a writer. And I'm an internationally known writer for my very first book, All About Me, Manners and Etiquette. It sells on the international market. Fantastic. Well, um, Carolyn and I have been friends for two years now. And I had to go back and look at pictures to figure out exactly when we became friends. And it was January of 2014. And her journal book ended December 2013. So, you know, I was a little disappointed I didn't get in her book. But I'll let her tell you all about what her book is. And um, what made you want to write a journal I mean, even before it was a book, what made you want to journal gratitude? Okay, first of all, Chelsea, I'll have to start a new journal so I can get you in there. (laughs) I'll do a Chelsea Williams month. But uh, in 2012, in October, I just kind of sat down. I was reflecting and just thinking about all the things that had gone on with me. And I was just coming through a very dark period in my life. My mother had passed away the year before. And I, I realized that I was in a good spot in October of 2012 in a good spot in that I've just been so um, people have poured into my life so much and I started thinking about all the things and all the people that have poured into my life to make me the person that I am and it helped me to get through that dark period it it really did I know it just kind of like the light bulb came on and that's why I I decided I thought oh I'm just going to every day write a gratitude post about someone, something who or a person who's contributed to my life of the person I am today. So I got a spiral notebook, drew a line down the middle of the page, and numbered pages one through three three hundred and sixty five. And I just started thinking of people and as I thought of people who contributed to my life, who've helped me to be the person I am, I put their name down there. And then in January, January first, I started 
actually writing the journal. And when it started, I was going to write in the spiral notebook, but I was already in the habit of writing happy birthday or saying happy birthday to all my contacts on Facebook. So I just got this idea. Well, while you're sitting here, just write your journal post. And that's how it got started. I actually started it on Facebook, not so much for people to read it. I know that doesn't make sense. It's on Facebook, so people read it. But I I didn't think that there would be a following. it. And honestly, people were following me and reading it and talking about the, the, uh, the, the post. And Rhonda um, Redmond at Genuine, mm-hmm. you know Rhonda. Yes. <laughs> Rhonda is a kind of a night owl like I am too. And Rhonda was on there. She said one night, she said, can you post um, earlier? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to wait up. <laughs> she said, can you post earlier? So the funny thing is, and I tell this story, the funny thing is um, I knew that her name was on my list a few days later. So I made a special effort to post earlier. And it was after midnight, but I made a special effort to post early. I'm like, let me do this because it's Rhonda, and she'll get to see it. Well, she went to bed early. Ah! (laughs) So she didn't get to see it until the next morning. Well, um, I know the majority of the entries are people. What made you choose to focus on people other than, you know, if if I did a journal of gratitude, it would be like, thanks for good weather. I don't know. (laughs) know? (laughs) Well, some of those are in there. Probably the one that draws the most attention is day number 365 because I'm showing gratitude for my sweater. I got a, (laughs) (laughs) I had a big sweater and I was so grateful. It was actually a gift from my son. He, he ordered it and because they were out at the store and it was actually delivered on the 31st. So I was like, I don't know who was on that list, but their name got taken off. I removed their name and put my sweater on there. But I <laughs> really, but I have, there are some books. I have, there are books that I've read and, and there are a couple of places that I've visited mm-hmm. on there, but it was just the people. I'm just so grateful for all of the people in my life who've contributed to me, whether it's the four-year-old, there's a story in there, a, a four-year-old who gave me a hug, gave me a hug. And then he gave me another hug because he was on spring break the week before and I'd missed my hug. And then he gave me another one because I wouldn't see him the next week. So wow. those are the kinds of things that just melted my heart and made me realize how grateful I am. Yeah. And that's how I did. So it wasn't hard to keep up the, the momentum of doing a, a post every night at all. It was because I had a list. And some of it is real time. There were some people on the list who I removed because some things happened, like right then, like the, the sacker at Kroger or the sacker at the meat um, in the meat department, there was a gentleman in the meat department who went out of his way to find there was a special and it wasn't out in the, the coal box. Mm-hmm. So he went to the back and found what I was looking for. So so some of it is real time. Some of it actually happened. I did my gratitude because they did something for me or to me for that day. Right. And you think focusing on these relationships has changed your life and made you more optimistic. Uh, how do you feel like it's it's changed kind of the focus of your business or everything together? I think everything together, it it has really helped me to be better. I've always been a fairly optimistic person. I've never been a naysayer, but this just made me go. I mean, just took it over the top that I knew that I needed to just show more appreciation because the more I showed appreciation, the less I've thought about myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about negative things as often. You just, you just don't because you're just out there looking at all the good stuff that's going on. Right. Okay. So what motivates you to go from a journal, turn that into a book? And, you know, when I was looking through your book, um, I noticed you included comments, which kind of surprised me. You included the Facebook comments. And so just why did you turn all that into a book? It was not my intention, but um, I have some friends who were always in my ear about you need to publish this publish this and and a colleague of mine we're in uh, another organization Houston coaches Deborah Bruce every time I'd see her she would tell me you need to make this a book you need to put this in a book Susan Downs who you'll probably see some of her comments in there I mean she said this are you going to make this a book is this a book and then Rosemary Barons who is my my good friend she said you really need to make this a book and I just ignored that and then I, when I said that, well, my, my, the reason for ignoring it is I thought, nobody wants to read this. That's really, <laughs> truthfully, that's what I said. Nobody wants to read this. But um, I was talking to my son, and then I thought, you know, 
I think I'll do this just for me. Mm -hmm. I really will make this book just for me. And the irony of it is I wrote all of the posts, but I didn't really read them. So as I got ready to publish the book, I read the posts. And it's just amazing to understand and realize that people thought enough or think enough of me to do the things that they did, to say the things that they said. And it just, it makes you so grateful because you, there are people out there who who really like you and love you and want to want to see the best for you. And, you know, I kind of, I kind of feel the same way, you know, I'm, I'm keeping my project on the down low, but you know, I'm not anymore. uh, (laughs) You know, I, I, before I decided to do it, you know, I'm thinking, Nobody wants, first off, I'm not a writer. I just want to put my pictures out there and I want to put a little bit of me out there, but I know nobody really wants to read it. Should I do it? And in the end, I was like, this is something I just want to do for me. This is something I would really like to accomplish. I want to have my photography out there, maybe a few of my words. Um, But honestly, once I get it finished, I don't know where I'm going to go from there. So I know that you have published other books. Um, Have you always self-published? Um, always self-published. How did you go about choosing that? The first book, the one that's on the that sells on the international market, all about me, manners mm-hmm. and etiquette. I actually went on the internet and mm-hmm. found a publisher, and it's in Georgia, it's in Savannah, Georgia. Mm-hmm. And I did my you know due diligence. I checked as much as I could, and found that it was a legitimate company. And the graphic artist for that company, the one that I chose, was actually in Italy. So we did everything over the internet. Everything was done over the internet. All mm-hmm. of the the book cover, the the um, clip arts, and everything that's in that little book, we did it over the internet. I did not know a publisher beforehand, so that's kind of how I did it. And then after that, I started using local publishers. But the publisher, Rev Media, how I came about using Rev Media is we are church members. Mm. David Yanez is a, he, he's a member of my church and I know that he publishes books. So I talked to him and that's how I got it. And he's, it was phenomenal experience. Huh? You see the cover, how beautiful. Yeah, the co- absolutely. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. cover. So he did all of that. And I, the, I had nothing to do with the way the cover looked except to tell them the title of the book. Huh? And you know, that just goes back to show it's kind of, you know, you meet people, you never know how they're going to influence your life. And I don't know, you know, I, I haven't known anybody that's, a publisher before so that's good information <laughs> i guess especially somebody that's local yes um another question i have for you is there's no pictures in your book okay <laughs> <laughs> as a photographer that bothered me a little bit uh if there's a sequel would you consider taking a picture adding some kind of like oh this is my friend courtney here's a picture of courtney or i don't know i would Definitely consider it. The the reason that there are no pictures is the book is so long. I mean, there are, <laughs> you know, there are 365 <laughs> entries. So and then comments. I decided to add some of the comments in there mm-hmm. and I didn't edit the book. Right. Um, the book is as printed is actually the post from Facebook. And I wanted to do that. I did that purposely because it was my journal. You yes. don't go back and edit your yes. journal. So and see that's that's one thing I've been debating too. I, I know. Um, sorry, I keep butting in. Go but, ahead. But I'm I'm a horrible writer, and so I'm really paranoid when I get this thing finished. That do I need an editor to go back and like edit everything, or should I just put it out there? Like I don't know. But I think it's interesting that you just did it as is, no editing, and um, I, I I like it. <laughs> and I, I and I have a comment in there in the forward. I apologize to Miss Orr. Miss Orr was my eighth grade English teacher. Before, I said, Miss Orr, if you read, you know, I'm thinking, Miss Orr, I know better. I know better. But it was because I just didn't want to change anything because it came from my heart. I wrote right. that as I was thinking about the person. And to go back and edit, and it's, I went back and read it, and I'm telling you, I went, yikes, for real, because it's, did I write this? <laughs> wrong tense, run on sentences, wrong words, misspell words. See, mine, I'm actually writing in a like a spiral and then later I'll go in and type it and so I've thought about like scanning the spiral and people won't even be able to read it they'll be like what like maybe it's just like a background picture or something they'll be like what is that this woman can't write at all <laughs> I don't think people will say that I think people will see that and see the sincerity and the authenticity in it I really do 
I'm hoping that when people read my book and they see the mistakes, mm-hmm. that they won't say, oh, my gosh, this is horrible. But they'll say, you know, she, this is from her heart and she's giving gratitude to the person. Right, right. No, I really enjoyed reading it. And, I, you know, even the comments that you included, I think, were great. And I, I love that. And it's an interesting idea. And anybody out there who um, wanted to do, uh, you know, a Facebook journal, I think this should be inspirational. And, okay, anybody out there, add pictures. Okay, just just add some pictures on it, especially if it's a Facebook post, just a picture. I'll do that next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get with you and make sure the pictures are good pictures. Pre-approved. Pre-approved. No. Pre-approved. <laughs> No, I mean, even if it was just a cell phone picture. No, um, I'm teasing. I didn't think about it, to be honest. I, I didn't. Yeah. But after the book was completed, there would have just been no way to add yeah. pictures. No, I get it. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. But mine will have pictures, so hopefully they'll be very good pictures. We'll see. I'll I'm, I'll edit that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, I appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today and telling us a little bit about yourself and 365 Days of Gratitude, which is a great way to start the year. Um, You want to tell anybody where they can find you or find your book? The book is on Amazon. So Amazon.com. If you go on there and put the title in the book, a title of the book in there or my name, Mm -hmm. it's it's there. And it's also available. It will be available on my website. Zircon Consulting dot com z i r c o n s u l t i n g dot com. Okay, and you are Carolyn I am Gray. Carolyn Gray, Zircon Consulting, the Great. author of Three Hundred and Sixty Five Days of Gratitude. There's always something to be grateful for. That's fantastic. Um, again, thank you for being on. Thank you for asking me, Chelsea. <laughs> really, I'm honored. I love having my friends on. It's fantastic. Um, on the next show, we'll be. January 26th, and I was talking about Texas school previously. Um, so the next person that will be on is Don Dickinson. He's the director of Texas school, and he will be able to tell us about all the instructors, all the classes, and you just don't want to miss that show. So that's January 26th, which is the fourth Tuesday of the month at 12 o'clock. Um, and if you want to listen to this show, you can listen to it again on IRLoneStar.com backslash ASS. And don't forget to go to the Conroe Art League today, which is right around the corner, and see Ed Gorman if you need help with your camera equipment. Until next time, this is Aperture and Shutter Speed, and keep on shooting. It's a wonder I 